Greetings, friends and family. Thanks for joining me. Sienta Tay, come on, grab a seat. You're in for a spectacular treat on Clarion Call with T.Y. Walker TV. On this episode, we have with us the Clarence Pope, founding member of the Bulldog Five. And today he shares his journey from addictions into conviction and now living a life of purpose and emission. Come on, Pastor Pope, tell us more. Uh, it was a tumultuous time. In other words, it was a critical time of race relationship uh, at that particular time. Uh, and uh, But we were able to uh, work it out. In other words, we were able to bring the community together by way of uh, you know, sports. Uh, I played uh, football at the uh, Clark Central High School, Bernie Harris High School, and uh, got a scholarship uh, to go to the University of Georgia. Uh, in 1971, was one of the first five to uh, uh, be a well, receiving a grant in aid, or we call them scholarships, uh, academic sports and academic uh, scholarship at the University of Georgia. Uh, it was three uh, individuals here in Athens, myself, Horace King, and Richard Appleby, and of course two other individuals, uh, Chuck Kennebrew and Larry West, one from Rome, Kennebrew from Rome, uh, West from Albany, Georgia. Uh, and, and again, uh, we being the first, uh, it was a uh, very critical that we uh, stayed together, uh, operated together, uh, learned uh, in our process and navigate uh, that type of territory. And we did, and we did so well. Uh, now, uh, as it comes, uh, I came out of college and, and uh, really needed to uh, uh, get a, a job, didn't have a job lined up. Uh, and uh, I began to had a friend that worked at the fire department and he said, why don't you get a job at the fire department? I did so uh, uh, by the grace of God and worked at the fire department as a total of 37 years uh, I was able to retire. Okay. But during those 37 years, uh, after 16 years, uh, there came a, a, a different uh, uh, journey in my life. In other words, I, I fell into a, a drug addiction okay. uh, after 16 years oh, at goodness. the fire department. Okay. Uh, and, and at that particular point, I, I really know noticed, uh, you know, I was basically being influenced by others and I, and I learned uh, about myself and that's why I can say it even at this particular end, uh, you know, don't ever be uh, influenced by others that, that will have you to, to do what they do, uh, you know, because if you do that, then uh, you'll find out you'll lose yourself uh, trying to gain the friendship of others and, and really it's no friendship because, uh, you know, they really on their own. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, let me interrupt you, Pastor, yeah. and while you're talking about friendships, uh, tell us briefly about that. Uh, was that somebody that you trusted? Because usually uh, our friends are somebody, you know, people that we do trust. So uh, did you trust them? Uh, well, not necessarily. Uh, I think it was a, a, a uh, core situation where you, you, you enjoy recreation and uh, you enjoy each other together, drinking beer and, and uh, watching games. And, and then uh, individual introduced a particular uh, a drug. Uh, that you know, to, you know, try this, you know. Mm -hmm. So is this a recreational drug, uh, it, or uh, today well, we call them prescription medications? No, no, no. It, this this was an illegal drug. It was uh, at that particular time in 1992. Uh, it was uh, crack cocaine, mm -hmm. uh, and it was uh, plenty among uh, uh, certain neighborhoods. Yes, uh, uh, around uh, many urban neighborhoods right. in the country. Amen. And uh, I found myself. Uh, I had I had seen an individual, uh, two individuals uh, before. Uh, and someone said, "Well, they are, you know, participating in the crack cocaine addiction," uh, and I and I was like, "Hey, I'll never do that." Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but I guess you call it peer group pressure. Yes. Uh, when you're around other individuals and they're doing something, and and uh, you're trying to prove to them that uh, you know I can do this, and and uh, uh, you know I'm strong and I'm I, I'm able to handle this mm -hmm. also. Uh, and I always thought I was strong-minded, but yet I found out I wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it took me to the lowest degree. Uh, I found myself uh, homeless. Uh, I, I found myself uh, degraded. Uh, I found myself ashamed. I found myself unkept. Uh, I, I was at the lowest of the low. I found myself absolutely depressed, and, and my whole physical makeup was beyond uh, recognition. I would say anybody that, that would have known me, known that you know I was fairly physical and uh, always you know tried to keep uh, you know, myself built up because I was a firefighter at that time. And uh, but after the drug addiction, I found myself at 133 pounds, mm -hmm. uh, from 240 pounds down to 133 pounds, and and uh, you know just bone bony face. So and you were almost un unnoticeable. Well, I was almost dead, uh, and really didn't recognize it. Uh, it, it's, it. It was such a, a fantasy in my mind that I'm thinking, well, I look good because I've lost weight, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. but yet I look like a, a, a skeleton. Okay. Uh, and uh, so you know, but when. Uh, 
that was a time I, I actually got to that point where one day I was, uh, and, 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 and there again, uh, I was not married at this time, but uh, I had, I had a, uh, the woman that is my wife now, uh, she, she stood by my side. And when I say stood by my side, she didn't, she, she, she wasn't the one that would, uh, you know, allow uh, me to or even know that I was doing it. But she found out. And when she found out, I, everything sort of went down on my end. And I found myself living in uh, uh, crack houses and, and things of that nature. So she kind of like divorced you well, uh, and, <laughs> before and, and, you were married. Well, not necessarily. Uh, okay. She 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 kept in contact with me. Okay. Uh, and uh, there were times she would come and and she would pray with me. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and there were times she would come and she would encourage me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was I was, I guess I was so depressed. I I really didn't I didn't feel as though I was even worthy uh, of having her. Uh, but she she felt as, you know not the fact that. She just wanted me. It was the fact that she had a loving heart, and she knew that she knew me before drug addiction. Okay, so she did know you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and she, and in other words, she she knew that you know I was a good guy, uh, and uh, had had morals, uh, but yet uh, with the drug addiction, it takes away all of that. Mm. And uh, I found myself, you know, just out there, uh, you know, just trying to get a get a hit, you know. Uh, trying to exist because my body was saying uh, it's normal to be high, mm -hmm. and when I wasn't high, I was absolutely depressed. Okay. Uh, and and so, but it came to that point of of, of depression where I, I found myself uh, willing to rob someone. Uh, I had uh, came from a particular town, went to a particular town, got some drugs, did the drugs, and now I came back to Athens, and and I'm high as I can be, and and, and what 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 influenced me to do this was the fact that I, my wife, or well, wasn't my wife at that time, but uh, my lady, well, she was to come over to the, the drug house that I was, and I and I was I was working, mm -hmm. and uh, and I told her, well, I'll I'll, I'll I'll give you some money, and uh, so now I don't spend all my money, and uh, I'm sitting there uh, in town, uh, thinking, well, what am I doing? So I'm, I'm at this uh, uh, hotel. Which has been torn down, and uh, ironically, it's a fire station now. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I was Full sitting circle. there, and and I was saying, well, you know, what I'm gonna do, you know, and I never ever thought about hurting or harming anybody that that didn't try to harm me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, my mind was saying, well, okay, what you got to do? You got to rob somebody. You got to get some money. Uh, and so, uh, how are you gonna do it? Well, it's, you see cars pull up, and they had uh, outside doors. Uh, what you do is go up and tell them, uh, you know, your, your your vehicle. See what car they have. Your vehicle is leaking gas, and they will say, well, uh, look out. And once they look out, and I said, well, okay, I'll I'll punch them out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and so that means that you were with another accomplice? No, no, no. no? I'm, okay. I'm all by myself. You okay. Know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and, and I'm thinking these things, and then all of a sudden it just came to my heart, what are you thinking? Because I heard what I was saying to myself. And uh, I said, Lord, help me. And when I said that, I got out of the front seat of, of the car. It wasn't my car. It was a loan car from a, my buddy. Uh, he was mad at me because I didn't keep it uh, longer than I should. Uh, and, and so I got into the back seat, and this was 9 at, that evening, and I fell asleep, and it was 9 the next day, 12 hours. I, and and, and it, so ironic about it, when, you, when you're when on uh, that, that type of drug, I mean, it just keeps you up and over and over. I mean, you don't sleep. But I, I know it was divine because I went to sleep, and when I woke up, I had a fresh awakening that I need some help. Uh, so I went to my buddy and took his car, and he uh, he was he was pretty mad at me, uh, and he told me, "Well, you can't stay here." So I, you know, I'm homeless. Uh, so I go to my uncle. Uncle says, "Well, you can't stay here. You know, you I heard about you. You're on that drug, man. And this is this is the uncle that that uh, he great man that, that you know loved me, always did for me, uh, and uh, but he was absolutely disappointed at me." Uh, because of you know all the things that they hoped for my life, it had fallen down to just being a drug addict, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and, I, and I cried out to him. I said, I, you, "You're my uncle. I, why can't I stay here?" He said, "Well, because you you own drugs." And he said, "You st you will steal." He said, "I know what uh, crack addicts will do," and so I went back that morning. I washed my face and went back over to uh, my uh, friend at the dope house, and uh, he let me in. And when I went in and they had new people in the house and, uh, and they were doing dope and then they were nice, beautiful people. Uh, you can tell that they, this is their first time. And so I went from that part of the house to the bathroom, washed up. And this is the first time that I saw myself. It was mm. incredible. The first time you saw yourself sober. Yes. Yes. I mm. could not believe that was me. And I actually cried in the mirror. That was like an awakening. Yeah, it was. It mm. was, absolutely. And so I came out. Uh, and they 
they they were they were doing dope, but they were horrified because they didn't know who I was. They they did because when I came in, I had a big beard and unkept and everything. But when I came out, I had shaven, uh, and uh, they saw a little bony neck, bony face individual that. It was horrifying because it was horrifying to me, and I know what they were looking at. And uh, I told them, I said, well, I bid you adieu. But when I saw them, I saw me. When I saw them, I saw me the first time that I started. And now I'm looking at me uh, at the end of this particular journey, and I'm saying to myself, uh, as I look at them, not only this is the last time that I'll, I'll be this way, but you know, I was I was sort of feeling for them because they didn't know what they were they were in for. Didn't know, you know what they were getting themselves yeah, they into. They didn't know what they were in for, uh, and so I went on and and, and, and got some uh, uh, some help. Uh, now talk to us about that. How did you get some help? How, well, I, I actually went uh, to uh, the at that particular time uh, it was the Athens Regional or Athens General Hospital, and behind there they had a drug uh, uh, abuse center. Okay. And so I went there, and 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 they. Uh, told me, so well, they said, we can't help you. You don't have insurance. And I was working, uh, but, and, but I hadn't been there for several days, and I've been on a bench. I was working, but I hadn't worked long enough to have uh, insurance of that caliber. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I was angry because I told him my story. Uh, but there was one individual who said, well, look, he said, uh, look, man, he said, my wife went through the same thing. And he says, uh, no, he said himself, because somebody else told me about the wife. He mm-hmm. said, I went through the same thing with uh, uh, over-the-counter drugs, you know. Okay. Uh, and he said, but the same way that you sought that drug, is has, it has to be the same way that you seek recovery. And, you know, yeah, it made sense, but I didn't want to hear that. I, I wanted, you know, I want some help. Right. Now, you mm-hmm. know? But he gave me a, a, infer- a referral uh, up to uh, North Avenue, uh, which was a drug uh, uh, rehab center. Okay. Uh, and... And I walked that, that it was 96 degrees, uh, and uh, it was, uh, well, June the 28th, uh, 1993. And you remember, yeah, you remember yeah, that June, day. June the 28th, mm-hmm. and uh, it was 96 degrees, and I walked from, from over at Athens Regional on now up, up to North Avenue. Now, how far is that uh, for viewers who are not from here? Well, I, I would imagine it's about four miles, yeah, three to four miles. Okay. Uh, maybe long, but <laughs> it seemed longer that day because uh, it was but uh, blazing hot yeah, outside, blazing hot. <laughs> uh, and you know, and I wasn't in the best of health, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, as I made that trip, I was tested three different times by individuals that that I did drugs with, uh, and uh, you know, they were uh, the first car, you know, stopped and and uh, they were asked me did I need a ride, and they they had some of that, um, you know, dope and. Uh, and uh, I said, yeah, man, I need a ride. And as I kept continue to get closer to the car, they continue to pull on off a little further and a little further. And I didn't really understand until I finally realized that these guys is messing with me mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. the car was shaking and they were laughing, you know, and they were just laughing at me. And, uh, man, that hurt. And uh, then I moved on uh, a little further. Another vehicle, one individual, he stopped, uh, and he was asking me where where, where it was, where the dope was and all. And I said, man, I don't know where no dope is. And I said, I'm trying to get to North Avenue. And he said, well, he said, I'm going, you know, a different way. Uh, and uh, then the third uh, vehicle, and I was almost there. And uh, uh, one of the guys said, uh, can I give you a ride? I said, no, man. I said, I'm almost there. Okay. You know? mm-hmm. uh, You're almost there. And when I got there, uh, there was an individual, and I said, I've forgotten his name now. But he was, he was so professional, but so, so down to earth, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he was so loving to a point where... He actually cared, and, and that's what I got from him. He actually cared, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he was asking me when I had eaten, uh, you know, do I have shelter? And he, he was talking about, you know, my my, my you know personal needs. You he know? was really concerned about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and he, he says, well, we, we'll, we'll start this, but uh, right now let me see can we get you in some shelter. And uh, he, he called around, and he says, well, I have two shelters available. Uh, and uh, one uh, was the Salvation Army, which was closer. And of course, that was on uh, behind Wendy's on Prince Avenue, off of Prince Avenue, on Meg Street. And uh, and I walked there. And when I walked there, uh, I was standing in line to, for to, to eat. Uh, and one of the guys that I knew came uh, down the hill, and it was sitting on a hill. And then he backed all the way up. And he looked, and he and they, they used to call me Bear. They were playing football. They used to call me Bear. Okay. And he, he looked, and he said, Bear. He says, that you? He recognized yeah. you. And he shook his head. And oh he my. said, man, he said, man, I wouldn't go out like that. Man, I wouldn't go out like that. 
And uh, in other words, uh, you know, he was basically shaming me, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I said, well, I said, you just don't know where I come from. I said, this is a good place. And, uh, you know, he went on and I was able to go in and eat. But as I came back out to get a room, I was talk, talking with the desk uh, clerk uh, and uh, uh, he was a, a young white man and, and uh, he actually cared. Uh, as a matter of fact, he, he says, well, you know, he said, everybody's got a story. He said, what's your story? And so I went down the, the whole road of, of, of telling him, well, you know, 16 years I was at the fire department and then went out with drug addiction. And so this is where I am today. Uh, and he, he says, well, as a matter of fact, I'd been five or six days away from a job you know, on the beans. He said, why don't you call your people, let them know where you're at. I didn't want to do that because, mm -hmm. you know, I was ashamed. Right. Uh, and, but he put the phone right in front of me, and I did so. And it was such a blessing because it cleared up. It cleared up my shameness to that certain degree. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, manager or the supervisor uh, says, uh, Clarence, he said, well, you're a great worker. He said, man, my wife, and that's why I was telling you earlier, uh, the guy, he says, my wife went through drug addiction. And he said, I know how tough it is. He said, I know it was tough for you to even call me. And uh, he says, as a matter of fact, he said, I'll tell you what. He said, I, I have, you had a salvation on me. He said, I have an apartment that you can live uh, free until you get yourself together. And, uh, you and know, you're talking about the person, the receptionist at the hotel? No, 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 no. The, 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 uh, uh, my supervisor, the work supervisor. supervisor. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was telling me that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I told him, I said, well, I had got some clarity of mind, and uh, I wasn't fixing to try to use anybody because I, I, I knew how drug addiction is. You, you use people and try to use them. And I said, well, no, I said, I'm here. And I said, I know I'm here for a reason. I said, uh, I, I'm going to stay here. And it was like me coming back to a child because, you know, I knew how I was raised. And uh, it was like me being a child all over again. Uh, because now I'm willing to listen. I, I went down that road where, you know, I thought I knew everything mm -hmm. and found out that it didn't lead to nowhere, but, yeah. you know, destruction. Yes. And so now I'm able to listen to those that were able to speak life to me. Mm. And it was so good. Refreshing. Yeah, because I, they spoke and, and they cared. You know, mm -hmm. when they spoke things, I knew they were caring for me. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't they wouldn't speak in some dramatic thing for me to try to, uh, you know, uh, prove something to them. Yes. Uh, and so... Uh, uh, at that particular time, uh, I had one check that was coming from from that job, and the guy told me, uh, he says, when you get yourself uh, together, he said, I want you to come back to work. Uh, and this was, you know, I told you, uh, 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 June the 28th, uh, 1992. Now, now, as I went through this whole process, this is another year had passed, and, and so now uh, I'm ready to go back to work. The guy says, well, he called me on July. Now, I'm at, uh, I'm at the uh, Salvation Army, uh, uh, and, and he says, well, uh, in July, which is, I told you, June the 28th, July the 1st, he says, well, I, I'd like for you to come back to work. And, oh, they were going to accept you back. Yeah, yeah, um, and th this is just a few days at, at, at the uh, Salvation Army. Uh, okay. And uh, I said, well, I told him, I said, well, look, he said, well, he said, I'll give you $2 an hour more a raise. And they were going to offer you a yeah. raise. And I said, well, listen, I said, that, that's so great. And I said, I thank you. I said, but right now, I said, my mindset is to everything that I do, I want to make sure that I'm in line with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to make okay. sure it's not me trying to get something that, that uh, you know, that I didn't earn or, mm -hmm. or trying to get something uh, just because somebody offered me. And uh, I said, could I pray about it? He said, yeah, yeah, you know, and, uh, and I did. And the Lord told me, he says, look at me. He says, I'm the healer. He says, you are healed. That's what he told me. He said, you are healed. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, will I believe this or will I not believe this? And this is you talking to yourself. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking to myself. And I'm saying, well, I believe that. And then, then, then he said, well, go back to work. You know, if you really believe that, then you go back to work. I went back to work. And from the day that June the 28th, uh, 1993, I said two. Two was when I went out totally in addiction. Mm -hmm. And it was three, it was a whole year uh, when I got to that point where uh, I've been fell to the bottom at Salvation Army. And now uh, I'm believing, believing God. My goodness. Yeah, I'm believing God. Mm -hmm. And uh, even in the Salvation Army, I'm, I'm so thankful. Uh, and, and I had an opportunity to have one check that was coming from the, my job. I went to uh, uh, up on uh, Hawthorne and bought a car. Really? <laughs> <laughs> bought a car with $300. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And uh, of course I had to pay like $50 a, a, a month. 
And uh, and so, but when I got the car, I didn't take it to the Salvation Army. I, I took it over to uh, uh, Bale's parking lot. Mm -hmm. and Which is a supermarket here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, and so, at that particular time, the, uh, there was a, uh, a, a pastor uh, working uh, with me at, at uh, it was AutoZone where I was working. Uh, his name uh, is uh, uh, Lloyd Craft. Mm -hmm. And uh, he heard of, of my plight. Uh, and uh, he invited me to, you know, come uh, uh, and started a men encounter group, men's encounter group. Okay. Uh, which was, was like a recovery group for men. Uh, nice. And uh, when I began to, to go, go to that particular group, uh, I began to see significant spiritual changes in my life and confident, more confident in the Lord and hearing the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as, I, as I did that, uh, he asked me, he says, well, look, he said, have you ever thought about going back to the fire department? I said, no, not the way I live. Because I, I left, uh, you know, here I was, uh, a, a uh, sergeant at that particular time, and uh, we are interviewing, me and other sergeants are interviewing uh, individuals on the department to be corporals. And I went to lunch, and I never came back. You My know? goodness. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what drug addiction will do. You know, when you try something, you think you're just going to try it for a period of time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you find out that it'll keep you longer than you ever thought you yes. would. Sometimes never turn you loose. Goodness. You know, a lot of times, and especially these days, you know, mm -hmm. you got fentanyl and all of that. You try something, and that might last thing you're going to try. Mm -hmm. All you right. Know. Well, to share with our viewers again, whoever's listening, yeah. that important note, that fact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, don't, don't participate in any, even vaping. You know, don't don't participate in it. You don't have to have it. You don't have to try to prove to somebody you cool. Because if you do, that might be the last time. You know, we we hadn't heard too much uh, incidents of, of, of fentanyl or different uh, of, of drugs being put in vapes, but there are. And, and as a matter of fact, it's not healthy. Period. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, my my suggestion, and I'm I'm here only by the grace of God because I should have been dead a long time ago. Uh, but if you really want to do something, you know. Don't try to prove something to somebody else. Prove it to yourself how great you can be. Okay. And when you when you abstain from letting other people influence you, you can be the influencer for good. Right, that and, is good. Amen. That is good. And so you know that that, that that's my story. Uh, I, I I got my job back in the fire department, and and I did uh, 21 years. Uh, and, and 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 at that particular time, time when I got my job back, that's when the Lord called me. That's when he went to, spoke to my heart. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and what was the, was it an audible voice? Well, it was a voice that, no, it wasn't no booming audible voice, but it was so strong in my heart. It was so strong in my spirit. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was on a hill and I was at the, uh, the church, the same church, Faith Gospel, uh, and we were moving. And, and where we were moving to was like uh, a, a mountainous area. Uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, so uh, beautiful. And you go down a mountain, a hill, that, it's not really a mountain, but it's such a steep hill, go up a hill. And I was moving the uh, uh, equipment and I got to this specific hill and the Lord pressed upon my heart and I began to cry and he says, pull over. Mm -hmm. And I pulled over and he showed me trees upon the hill and he says, those, and not just the trees, he said, I want you to speak my word to my people. Goodness. And, and mm -hmm. I saw the trees and the trees were like, and even in scripture, it talks about trees being like men. Mm -hmm. And I, as I you know, grew a little bit later, I, I read that scripture and it, it, it dawned on me what he was really, really saying. Yes, you know? yes. Uh, and uh, it was like, I knew. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't know, you know, nobody else told me, mm -hmm. you know, because people always try to tell you, oh, you, you, you'll be a good preacher. You're not, not, hey, they don't, don't listen to the folks, but, right. you know, listen to the spirit that speaks to your heart. And uh, whether it's an audible voice or not an audible voice, but you'll know. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and I knew. And, and you uh, knew, yeah, no uh, doubt about yeah, it. I knew. And so, you know, I, I uh, went to uh, uh, Beulah High Bible School, uh, you know, got some, got some education. But so it, you did it, go and get some formal education. Yeah, I got some formal education, mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't all about the formal education. It was about really uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to teach me uh, and get under uh, uh, individuals that, that have walked the walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 Pastor Kraft, I, I did my first initial sermon with him and uh, Pastor Larry C. Ford. I've been uh, with uh, him uh, for 20, over, yeah, 25 years now. That's a long time. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and as a matter of fact, he licensed me, he ordained me, uh, and uh, not only is he my pastor, he's my friend, mm -hmm. uh, and I love him. And, uh, you know, it's just a wonderful man. My wife, he, as a matter of fact, 
the Lord used him as an instrument of me and my wife getting married. Getting we married. were, we were, we, when, uh, when I, you know, came out of the Salvation Army, uh, she came to get me, says the Lord has blessed us with an apartment. And I told her the same thing. Well, I'm not ready until the Lord says ready. And the Lord, you know, gave me some clearance uh, thereafter. Mm -hmm. And we married and, uh, <laughs> But how, how we married, we, we you know we had to get licensed then. We kept missing the, the, the 30 day window uh, okay. for, for license. You know you had to get blood tests. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, Pastor Ford he came to preach at Faith Gospel on, 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 a, on a revival. And that day I was working at AutoZone, and man, it was like uh, I did not want to go because I've been up from like two that morning going to work and, and came home. I'd been at 15 hours, you know. Okay. And so I I was just laying there, and the Lord told me get up and go. And, 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 you, and, and I know it had to be the Lord because I couldn't convince myself to get up and go, you know? Yes. And when I got up and I got there, by the time I got there, he was just about to preach. Uh, and my wife had a seat for me. And uh, uh, I think he was preaching out of uh, 1 Corinthians 6, uh, uh, maybe 13 or something like that. Yeah, what six, that nine, talk about? six nine. Six uh, nine. And it was about, uh, you know, uh, no fornicators or no, uh, you know, adulterers or none of these things will be able to enter into the kingdom uh, uh, of heaven or kingdom of God. Uh, and, and me and my wife, uh, uh, at that time, not my wife, uh, but we were asking and saying that, hey, we're going to do it God's way. We're going to do it God's way. And so as he would continue to preach, and uh, the Spirit just hit me, wow. It's time, it's, it's time to get married, you know. And I looked at my wife and my wife looked at me and she nodded her head and I nodded my head. She knew. Yeah, she knew and I knew at the same time. I mean, that was so weird, you know. And, and I wanted some confirmation uh -huh. uh, after he prayed. I said, I said, what you were nodding your head? She said, we think you're married. Okay. I said, no, I, don't. I said, I'm thinking the same thing. So I'm thinking uh, this it, it will take place, you know, some other time uh, at night. Oh, what? Yeah, she went, she went, she went to the pastor. She said, uh, tonight, uh, uh, the Lord spoke to us and we're getting married. He said, well, he said, we're going to make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he did. Uh, and, and we got that very that, night, that very night. As a matter of fact, uh, didn't, didn't have our rings. He, he loaned us the rings. Loan the rings. next day we went and got the rings. <laughs> so, oh, my know, goodness. But it's been a blessing. Uphill uh, ever since. It has been uh, up, mm -hmm. and uphill is in glory. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am so thankful. And I'm so thankful to be able to share that. And as for the youth, uh, take this opportunity to live in a special way that down the road you wouldn't have tarnished your life. You would you actually gain as you as you are obedient uh, to those things that are right. You will gain wisdom. You'll gain knowledge, and therefore you will not only be blessed, but you'll be a blessing. Well, talk to the viewers. You, you explained about uh, those things that are right. Mm -hmm. How would we find out? How would we know? what is right and what is wrong. In a day and age where uh, I say, quote unquote, uh, wrong seems right, talk to us about that. How do we discover that for ourselves? I, I believe every man is, 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 has a conscience uh, and God has given every man a conscience. And so, and when you say, a, I'm sorry, Pastor Pope. So mm -hmm. when you say every man, we're talking about man and woman. Yeah, every we're human about, being, every yeah. mankind, mankind uh, has given uh, every human a, a conscience. In other words, they have the ability to know within themselves what is right and what is wrong. Uh, but there can be the culture of society that, that inundates you with information and information that takes that which is right and call it wrong and that which is wrong and call it right. So the only way that you can truly know what's right is to be able to open your heart uh, and say, there is a creator that has created everything. Uh, and that very creator knows exactly what you need. And if you will just say to yourself, I don't know everything that I need. And see, pride will tell you, you can. Yes. See, and most people are full of pride and they think that they know how to do this and that. They know their, their way of navigating life, but that's not so. Mm -hmm. uh, and they'll always find out down the road. They always run into something that, that, whether it's sickness, whether it's finance, no matter what it is, they will run into something that will stunt them mm -hmm. and they will cry out for help for yeah. someone. Yes, I uh, call it a crossroads. That's right, mm -hmm. hey, amen. Mm -hmm. so, so don't you don't have to wait till you get to that point. You can make some decisions now. Uh, the decisions now is to be able, if you're a parent, to, to be able to teach your children what's right. Well, how do you teach your children what's right? Well, not from the uh, Constitution. Uh, well, there are, there are what we call a commandments, and those things are not, you can't keep them according to your own natural ability. Mm -hmm. And so there is one that is able 
and people say, that's foolish, that's foolish. Well, you know, that's, that's a scripture. Is it okay for me to mention the scripture? Yes, yes. and when we're talking about scriptures, we're talking about the, using which text? Uh, we're talking about John 3, 16 right. out of the Bible. Okay, and we're talking about the Bible. Yes, mm-hmm. and, and, and it says, uh, for God, he is the creator of all things. And if you if you if you are not one that to believe that, then uh, you know that means that you know everything. Uh, and so if you open your heart and act, actually understand, he says that he loves the entire world. Okay. And when and, you say who, who are we talking about? We're talking about Yahweh. We're talking about the heavenly Father. We're talking about our, the God that created all things. Uh, he not only created all things, but he created mankind. And, and most people say, well, he didn't create me. Well, he created your parents who were created by your parents. They were created by their parents. They went all the way back to one man, which is Adam. Uh, and in that, you begin to understand that you have a, a, a internal clock that's telling you that you will not live forever. Mm. Uh, and what will you do? Uh, what will you do? Most people think, well, I, I, I would just be absorbed and, and uh, you know, there'll be no more me. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. and that's it. But that's a- absolutely wrong. And it, it's easy to think that because that means that there'll be no judgment of all of your actions. Uh, you do what you do and, and, and there'll be no consequences. Even today, if you do wrong, there will be consequences. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and if you do that which is right, then you'll be blessed. Mm-hmm. Well, what is wrong? What is right? Well, right is being right with the Creator. And there's only one way to be right with the Creator. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Who is that only begotten Son? It is Yeshua. Uh, that's His real name. That's His Jewish name, Yeshua. Uh, um, we call Him Jesus. Uh, and, and, and it says He, he, he has given Him uh, that as, his, as He gave His life for what? You and I. Uh, so what does that mean to you? That means somebody, and we ain't talking about anybody, but we're talking about Yahweh the heavenly father, the creator of all things, had a son and he sent him and not this, he sent him, he came in him uh, so that you can have eternal life. Uh, Not only eternal life, but in him is wisdom. In him is knowledge. In him is understanding. Mm -hmm. When you go to the Bible, then if you have received him, then the Holy Spirit, which is the third person of of, of the triune God, in other words, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, he's able to teach you. If you really sincerely want to know the truth, then just ask. Say, Father, teach me the truth. Mm -hmm. Father, show me the truth. Mm -hmm. And he'll show you the Christ. And then you'll find that you will be brought into a mind transformation. You'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. In other words, the thing that you used to do, then you'll find you have power not to do it. And you wouldn't want to do those things anymore. Amen. And the things that you have have not even dreamed of that will be so special, and that's which is what? Helping others, being a blessing to to others, uh, and and, and enjoying uh, being a blessing to others. You'll find the power to do so Mm -hmm. with such joy that you can't even uh, speak of. Yes, it's like being supernatural power. Supernatural power. So who would not want that? Uh, the, The person that would not want that is just the person that wants to be selfish uh, and saying that all I want is something for me. All I want is uh, something so someone can look at me and say, wow, uh, look at them. They got those beautiful clothes on. Wow, they got this beautiful car. Wow, look at the house they got. But don't you know all of that stuff going to go away? And not only all of it is going to go away, but you might go away before it goes away. And so you want something that's substantial and eternal, something that will last forever. Mm -hmm. And that is receiving Christ, Yeshua as your savior, to save you, not just to save you from death, uh, eternal death, but to, to save you for the prosperity in life. And we ain't talking about, you know, a, a clothes and, and, and cars. We're talking about being able to prosper in all things, mm-hmm. uh, in your health, in your wealth, in your life, in, in, in the essence of whoever you are, mm-hmm. then you are able to prosper. And that can include our relationships. Amen. Like you Amen. just talked about, you spoke about your job. Amen. Becoming a fireman. That's right. And, and then at the end, still being able to retire. Amen. As one. That's yes. a blessing. Mm-hmm. It is. That's a blessing. It is. And it will give you clarity. In other words, I think that's one of the things that we all need today is a clear mind and a clear conscience, Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, And so, you know, if you want a clear mind and a clear conscience, seek the wisdom of God, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, and how do we do that? Give us those steps briefly. Well, those those steps, uh, as the Word uh, uh, says in in, in the Bible, uh, first of all, you need to confess your sins. Uh, You know, and I know, I know for myself, 
uh, when it came to that point in my life, as you said, the crossover, that point where you have, uh, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you know it's something in your life that is better, uh, and as you begin to seek that something which is far better than where you are, then there's one that you can confess to. Uh, the word says confess your sins to him. Uh, and you know what they are. Uh, you don't have to talk to somebody. Uh, just confess to him that I am a sinner, knowing that being a sinner separates you from him. Uh, as you confess, then what you do is receive him. Confess in your heart uh, and speak in your mouth, but speak that I am a sinner, but confess uh, and repent. Now, when I say confess, confession comes with repentance. What does repentance mean? Turn around. Mm -hmm. Turn around from, if I, if I say, well, I, I, I repent of, of doing these particular things, what I'm saying is these things are not what I want to do anymore. Mm -hmm. And turn away from those things. Okay, and for you as an example, it was? It was, it was, uh, it was drug addiction, of course, uh, but it was so many other things. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the way of thinking. You know, it, 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 and, and as you continue to grow, you'll begin to find out that, you know, you have so much more to repent from, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and, but yet, he's, he's not mad at you uh, because he's already done the deal. He's already sealed you. He's already taken care of you through his son. Uh, and so he is, he is satisfied with you because of what he has done uh, in his son. Mm -hmm. And so all you have to do is confess, repent, and receive him in your heart. And as you receive him, uh, he comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, and he abides with you. Amen. And then you seek a, a Bible teaching uh, church. You see, seek uh, a, a, a church that lifts up the name of, of, of Yeshua, Jesus. Uh, and, and, and you fellowship uh, with those uh, believers. Uh, and you begin to learn how to live according to what the word says. Because the word is spirit and it'll get into your spirit. Your spirit will come alive. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, uh, you briefly uh, shared the steps there, and uh, we pray that the viewers, uh, if you need help, you follow through with that and those steps. Uh, is there one last uh, final word that you want to share uh, with our viewers here? Uh, I just want to say that no matter what you're going through, you can overcome it. There is nothing uh, that God won't, um, that you can do that God won't accept you. But I uh, briefly share one last final word there. Uh, and then again, family, this is Clarence Pope, which is now the Pastor Pope. All right, share with us one last final word to well, encourage. Well, I tell you, uh, you know, it's been a journey. I've been on a journey and you are on a journey also. So what do you do on that journey? Just like any journey, you prepare yourself. If you're going anywhere, you prepare yourself. And in preparation, then you make sure that you are ready. Uh, and the only way, as I said earlier, to make sure that you are ready is come out of your self-thinking and get into the knowledge and wisdom that is spiritual so that you're guided by the truth. Always be guided by the truth. Do not listen to lies because lies sound so good and they give you false uh, 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 expectation. But stay in the truth. Uh, every day, wage everything and weigh everything according to the truth. Whoever tells you anything, whatever you hear, weigh it according to the truth. And if you do it that way, you will reach the destination uh, that has been designed for you. All right. All right. Well, you've heard it here with T.Y. Walker TV. Again, this is the Clarence Pope, which is now the Pastor Clarence Pope. And again, just share briefly with us how anyone can reach out to you. Do you have a site, uh, maybe social media? Do you have an email? Well, how can persons reach out to you if they have any questions? Well, you can reach out to me, of course, by uh, uh, Email, uh, email is uh, pastor, uh, P-A-S-T-O-R-C dot A dot Pope at uh, gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you can uh, uh, look, uh, email uh, New Freedom Christian Center uh, uh, at, uh, I, I believe that's still gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, okay. Uh, and also, uh, I am uh, with the organization, has a non have a non-profit organization. Uh, oh, do you? Uh, the uh, Bulldog Five, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it is... Uh, www.bulldog, uh, capital B-O-U-L-L-D-O-G, uh, five spelled out, uh, dot org. Thanks for listening to T.Y. Walker TV. You can find us on Facebook and also on YouTube. And until the next time, peace out and listen as I share.